The Fuji X-H1 got a new firmware update. What up, Avan? Katie here with the Tola Visuals, and today we are going to be discussing the newest firmware update for the X-H1. A lot of you know me as more of a Sony shooter, but I also love Fuji film cameras. I first got this camera because I was really interested in Fuji colors and I was really excited when they finally put out this mirrorless camera that was more geared towards video people like myself. I love the body, I love the colors, and I love their lenses. However, this camera was not perfect. When it first came out, the autofocus was really slow, the image stabilization was, ooh, it was so bad even on a gimbal. I just would turn it off because it would just do this weird, I don't even know what it was, it was just jumping in frame. I was so excited for this camera that we actually pre-ordered it. I was debating if I should sell it and get the X-T3 or hold on to it, but I'm really happy that I did because with the newest firmware update, they changed many of the issues that I had. The biggest fix on the latest update is its in-body image stabilization. For those of you who have image stabilization Fuji lenses, you now have full five access in-body image stabilization. Congratulations. And for those of you who do not, like I have right here, you do have a big fix with panning and not having any more jitters. I'm gonna show you some test footage right now. Roll the clip. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about the footage. Other improvements are before when you got to four gigabytes when you're recording one long clip, it would cut it into smaller files. It'd break up the clip, which is annoying when you're editing or you're transferring files. It's very confusing. So now if you use an SD card over 32 gigabytes, it'll keep it in one long file. Thank you, thank you. There's times where I got scared that I wasn't recording a full clip but it was just in another file. So that's no longer a problem. Another problem that was fixed, they said they had some slight bug fixes. So with, I don't know if it was just with mine, but our battery grip, for some reason, the shutter release did not work at all. But for the longest time, we were using this as a battery charger. Now that's a pretty expensive battery charger, if you ask me, because you could put two and charge them at the same time. But now I could finally use it with the camera body once again. So I'm very thankful for that. And the very last update for those of you who care about color temperature is now they have it displayed on the LCD and EVF. So if you wanna update your X-H1, here's how you do it. To update, head over to the Fuji support site or click the link down below in the description box and download the firmware into a formatted SD card. Once downloaded, plug the SD card into the camera with the power off. Press and hold the display slash back button while powering on the camera to be prompted for the firmware update menu and follow the on-screen options for the update. So if you're thinking about getting an X-H1, it is definitely cheaper if you buy a used one because there's a lot of people selling it because they're a little impatient waiting for these firmware updates to roll out. But after months and months of waiting, I'm so happy that they did because now I could confidently shoot this. Anyways, that's a short little video update for today. Thanks for hanging out with me. Find my IG because I post it on the daily. Don't forget to subscribe because there's gonna be a lot of future tutorials, tips, collabs, business tips coming in January, so be prepared for that. You do you fam, and I'll see you when I see you. Mm, done. Mm, done. Up, up, you, me. The biggest update that they did with this firmware update, too much update. Embody, <laughs> woo, access to five access? That's weird. And then I held on to it and I'm talking too much.
Ow. What am I saying? Fuji fam.